And so at the time, you know, I was like, oh, I want to be out, you know, doing my thing and hanging out with my friends, which I got to do a lot of that. But um, it took kind of going away and, and basically working in the private sector to kind of show me that this is really, this is really, you know, what I most wanted to do. I've always just dreamed of, a, of an occupation where I could be with my family. So that's probably the biggest thing I really enjoy is being able to be in, be at this place with them, you know, and we're all right here. We don't have a hairy lifestyle. Because it was a little bit of a bumpy transition from one life to the other. I guess we're still making it in a way you know, two years later. But uh, just going from, you know, working a basically a steady paycheck job in the city um, in the Valley, you know, coming back out here it's, it's a pretty big it's a pretty big leap. Chris coming home to farm is like a dream to me coming true. So I was born and raised right here on this farm. I'm the fourth generation to do that on this same piece of piece of ground so that's really significant and a big part of my life. So I was born here and uh, grew up you know with helping my dad. My dad always has farmed in some way, shape, or form here. Our farm's been in existence since 1903. My grandfather bought the farm, and now we've completely changed over to organic production uh, and sustainable uh, agriculture. For most of my childhood, I had my, my grandpa here as well. So it was my dad, myself, and my grandpa, and we, we really did a lot of the work. And uh, I just have a lot of memories of, you know, wintertime spent building fences or, you know, repairing things and my grandpa and my dad teaching me carpentry skills and uh, I just you know thought about that a lot as I began to think about my own children and how I wanted them to be raised and where I wanted them to be raised and uh, it just became clear to me that there could be no better place to instill in them these values that I want and skills that I want them to have than, than right here so that was a big part of the decision to come back to our to our farm. It does take a lot of a lot of labor to, to run an operation like this, but uh, you know it's a lot of hard work, a lot of long hours. But uh, I enjoy every minute. I uh, can't wait till the next day to to get started. I guess you could say that uh, I get to ride a little more, and they get to do a little more hands-on work than I than I do. But I've had my share of it. Thank you. <laughs> Our vision has always been. Uh, to serve our neighbors and um, we really love the way this effort is making folks in this county aware of, of good quality food produced right here at home. Spend all the dollars we can right here in the, in the county I think is, is fabulous. You know? So the thought of you know a secure channel to, to move a, a large volume of product to us is, is quite appealing and again we could really get behind something like this co-op just because uh, it would just mean so much to the greater community too. So most of us in this type of agriculture realize that you know we serve people that really care about what they're eating and we totally respect that and welcome folks to come see us and, and ask us questions and I don't think you're going to get that a lot of times buying uh, you know, Chilean broccoli or whatever. <laughs> <laughs>